Uh, Saturday night. Let some people get on here and then I'll get my camera set up and get in front of it there. So we got uh we got five saws here. We got the five hundred. Ah, uh, the fuel injected saw from steel. It has the West Coast felon dogs on it from West Coast Saw. It's got the bark box on it. Then we've got the 572 XP from Hus Warner. It has the large felon dogs on it. This is a they say a 25 inch bar, but it's actually a 24. It takes the same drive lengths as this one right here. And they're both 24s. This is a Steel Light Sugiara Sugi Horror. And then we've got the 362 C Mtronic saw. Bark box on it, large felon dogs on it. The good chain catcher on it too. And of course the 500's got the good chain catcher on it. And then, all right, so check this out here. This is, a, this is actually, the, the 261 is not a favorite. I, I like the 362 pretty good, but the 261 is kind of my least favorite one out of it. But uh, check out what I've done to it. I've got the large dogs on it. I put the three spike dogs on this saw right here. <clears throat> And so I want to point this out. These dogs, all this, these dogs here and the bark box, all that stuff comes from West Coast Saws. And I, I bought it and paid for it. And then I've also got the large chain catch on it. But here's the cool thing about the three spike dogs from West Coast. You see the middle dog right here on this? It lines up with the chain on the bottom. So as you're cutting on your cutting plane, you can just glance at your dog right there as you're dogged in and you can see where, you know where your chain is in the cutting plane. So, and then last saw then is the 550 XP Mark II. Uh, this is Screaming Demon right there. These two saws cost the same amount of money and if I've got a Husqvarna dealer around, I'm going to go with this saw over this one, I just, I like the 550 a lot better than the, than the 261. Uh, just, you know, different things about it. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna order a set of three spike dogs for the 500. See, that spike right there doesn't line up with the chain. And so I'm gonna get the three spike dogs for this right here and put them on the 500 right there is what I'm gonna do. I like the 500, I like that saw a lot. The 500 full of gas and oil compared to the 572 full of gas and oil. Both great saws, very comparable the way they cut. I've got a great video where I run them against each other. Uh, they cut, they're very, very close in what they'll cut. And, but the thing is, is the 500 right here, it weighs just over a pound lighter than the 572. All right, so we've got uh, about 100 people in here, so we're gonna uh, flip the camera around and get it set up and get it plugged up. Oh, I did, I, I seem to say I had it. I've got the camera wrong here, but. And then I'm gonna get my glasses on where I can look at everybody's comments, get my iPad situated. Y'all just bear with me just a second here. Get you my mount and where I can See what's going on, cause I can't I can't read anymore unless I've got my glasses on. So, hey, y'all hit the thumbs up. Let's see, let's get this thing plugged in. Here, I think she's plugged in. Maybe. Let's get her lined up here. Okay. Get situated. All right. My glasses on when I see and get my iPad open where I can watch the comments right here too and kind of keep it with uh with them as I can do a better job on my iPad than I can up here. There's old David Coons from over at Northport. David, I'm gonna be back over there, uh Northport Power Equipment. They're gonna have another show over there March the 18th and 19th. 
uh, coming up, and Chad Ganey is going to be there both days. I'm going to be there on the 19th uh, and stuff. Let's see. Yeah, Luke. I'm going to tell you, Luke, I hadn't talked to the people at West Coast at, at all. I hadn't had any communication with them whatsoever. And uh, the all, all I've done is got on the got on the website and order stuff from them. And man, their stuff is like it's top notch stuff and they ship quick too. I like that also. Let me get over here where uh where I can get let me turn this volume down. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna pull back up through the thing. Here a lot of people saying hey uh I see everybody here a lot of people, uh, I mean, it's perfect Saturday night, just hang out in the shop here for a little bit. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, Cody Myers from Northport, Alabama, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> Georgia deer hunting. Uh, let's see, when did the steel chainsaws, I'm looking through here real quick, let's see, uh, uh, somebody, George Hoff, uh, got a 848 yesterday, he said, wow, uh, let's see, so, uh, Jason Harlan's plowing snow in Indiana, <laughs> Mr. Sl Larry Slosky, Mr. Larry is on the thing, he's in the video today, he, he a film he's been in a bunch of uh i see you napa mike and i see you coming in napa brent's here i seen him let's see i'm about to catch up uh sean from down at uh down the river meridian he's in here uh ohio valley pond excavation asks what are my thoughts about the 661 comparison to the 500 i'm gonna get one i just not sure if i'll be running a 20 90 inch or so bar okay so that's a great question. The 661 and the 500, it's a lot of weight difference between those two saws. It's right around three pounds of weight difference between those two saws. So you get up, when you go from the 500 to the 462 size, the 500 and 462 weights are, are pretty, pretty comparable. But when you jump up to that 661, you jump up nearly three pounds in saw. And man, unless you just need something that's got something like that, I would I would back down from that right there, because I don't know what a 661 costs, but uh, I'm sure they're not cheap either. Let's see. Uh, there's John Boys on here. Uh, let's see. Med J Double O Maker thought well, I was a husky guy. What's up with all the steel? Well. <clears throat> So last year uh, with Huss Varner, uh, I, I don't have a contract with them and they're not paying me per se, paying me or nothing. So last year during the whole calendar year, the, the only two things that I got from them was a battery pole saw and that flexi tool belt. And so you got to remember this stuff that they give me uh, comes at it, it re not retail price, I, you know, they're giving it to me at their cost. And so I had all kinds of email communications and, and I have to, I don't communicate with Huss Vaughner. I'm communicating with a, uh, with a marketing company that does all their marketing, handles all their marketing, all their marketing. And, uh, man, it just, it just wasn't there. So I was like, you know, it, it'd be kind of like, it'd be kind of like if you work your job all week, and you busted it all week, and then at the end of the week, you didn't get paid. And so I just used the opportunity to, and it's, it's no ill will or anything like that, but, I mean, I just used the opportunity to, to, get, to get the steals, and, and I wanted to run them. I wanted to see it, kind of the, is the grass greener on the other side of the fence kind of thing. You know, they had the 500 out. You know, I got an opportunity to run one of them back in October, and, and I liked the saw. The saw wouldn't open up, and I found out later on why it, why it, did, it wasn't opening up. It was brand new. And, uh, and so I liked it, and I was like, well, heck, <clears throat> I'll, just, I'll get a 500. I want a 362, and I want the 261, and I want them all in tronics. I don't want – I didn't the, – the, 
the people that are still hung up against auto tune and the electronic stuff, man, you need to get with the 21st century and come on. I mean, come on. Because you don't know what you're missing as far as what the saws will do. Let's see. So I run, uh, uh, I got them, and it's giving me an opportunity to play with them and weigh them. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, that's, that's a big thing, man, is the weights on these saws. And, and so what it, what it does, here's the thing. Here's the thing that people don't get right here. I'm not looking at the comments. This is the thing that people don't get. You got, it's like 4GM, Alabama, Mississippi State football, uh, Husband or steel and everything. All right, so you got me here spending my own money to buy these saws <clears throat> to run the crap out of them, run the dog out of them, and then I can present that in front of y'all because I'm going to tell it like it is that the saw sucks. I'm going to tell you it sucks. The, the 261 is not a keeper. I just, I can't. I can't get in love with it. It's it's not in in the the 362 is okay, but like the 500 572, they're very very comparable. Even though there's eight cc's of of displacement there, but the 500 wins because it's it's a little over a pound lighter than the 572. So that pound of difference wins with me because I have a very bad back and a very bad neck too. One thing you'll never see me do in a video is if I get hung up or I go to get hung up with a chainsaw, you'll never see me jerking on it because I will jerk my back slap out if I do. And I've had major neck surgery in 2013. I had two discs replaced in 2013. And so... I just lay it out there like it is, and that's that. All right, there's 185 people on here watching, and there ain't but 56 likes on it. Come on, let's hit the thumbs up if you ain't subscribed uh, subscribe to me and everything. Because, see, I'm going out on a limb on doing this stuff, too, with with buying these steels. I don't know if I'll get anything else from Husqvarna or not. If I don't, it doesn't matter. I'll just buy it. I, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'll buy it. I want to be able to put stuff out there to where when people do a search on chainsaws and they're looking for them, because if, if, somebody, if somebody's going to buy something now, probably the high 90 percentile range, unless they know what they're going to get when, they, when they, they know without a shadow of a doubt what they're going to get, they're going to go to YouTube. They're going to go to YouTube. They're going to punch in Hush Warner 572. They're going to punch in Steel 500i. They're going to get different videos that are going to pop up. So they pop up, you can watch those videos and you can, you can see real quick, you can tell who's legit, who's blowing smoke up somebody's butthole, who's brown nose and whatever like that right there. I'll tell you right now, David Breeden with Husqvarna, he's flipping over in his grave right now. He's mortified with, uh, with, with what I'm doing and everything, but he knows why, he understands why I'm doing it and, and all that stuff like that. So... It gives people an opportunity to watch the videos because you can watch a video and you can watch something run and you can make up your mind, I'm going to get this or I'm going to get that, you know. And so like with the, what my game plan is, is whatever I don't like, I'm going to sell it or do something with it, put it on eBay or whatever I'm going to do. Somebody wants to go after it, they can they can go after it and get it. Um, the thing about the steels, they're always about going to be lighter than the Husqvarna's, like the 550 XP. Yeah, I've got the combi can. I got three of those combi cans. As a matter of fact, Mr. Frank, the the 550 and the 261 steel, the steel is a little bit lighter. It's um, like. It's not a pound, it's, I don't know, eight or 10 ounces, something like that or whatever, but it is, it is lighter than the, than, the, than the 550. But the 550 runs out a lot better than the, than the 261 does, in my opinion. It, the 550 is just a, in a, a, league of, a league of its own. I'm not selling the 500. 
I'll tell y'all my two go-to saws that y'all will see in the videos that I'll be running. The two go-to saws that you'll see will be the 500 and the, five, and the 500 steel fuel-injected saw and then the 550 XP Mark II. Those will be the two saws that you see running in my videos. And so uh, that's in, in the mere fact there's nothing wrong with the 572. I will just be able to be more productive with the 500 because I will be able to run longer with it than I can with the 572 because of the weight of it, that little over a pound, the weight difference right there. And uh, let's see. So I'm just kind of uh, going through, let's see, uh, just looking through here real quick. And then let's see, Tyler asked, how many, hey, I remember seeing your comment today, Tyler. Y'all hit the thumb, 232, come on, let's, let's, get the, let's get the thumbs up on up on it right there. I'm not sure if it's going to be a spring sale or not, David. I'm sure they're going to have some stuff marked down. We ended up with 17 loads today. I loaded 17 by a little after 1 o'clock today. And, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Carter just commented, and he said, would I consider porting my 550? Here's something else that I've got uh, that gets me with the steel um, Husqvarna thing. All right. So you can get a lot of aftermarket uh, stuff for the steels, like the the bark boxes, like I've got on these on these steels. Let me grab this three sixty two right here where you can see it. So you can see that's the bark box from West Coast Saw right there. They cost about seventy five dollars. You can see it keeps your stock exhaust port right there, and then you got a big port right there and so it completely changes the dynamics of the saw big time when you when you put it on there and the the way it sounds is just mind-boggling i'll crank them up here in just a minute where you can hear the sound difference on them but i mean it sounds like a dirt bike or something and uh yeah byron if i if they have the moultrie the ag the sunbelt ag expo down there i'll uh uh I'll 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 cut, I'll be down there and everything. So anyhow, um, you can't get stuff like this for the dead gum hus owners, man. And you kind of got to make it your own. And they, I've been talking to some people. I wish I could find some stuff. Cause see, like the see the muffler on the hus owners. Is real, it's round, it's kind of shaped like an eggplant, so to speak. They're real easy to get the spark arrestor out of them and everything. But I'm going to do some more studying on it. It is a two-piece muffler here. And uh, I'm, uh, I would, I would like to have it ported on there just because of the way the crazy thing, uh, Real crazy things uh, sound and stuff. Let's see. Uh, uh, Larry says I was. Dartell says I was. I was too too busy in the live stream to, to give a thumbs up on. It. I understand that. I understand that. Let's see. Goats firewood and farms. Hey bud. Let's see. Uh, uh, Let's see, Derek Pettit asked, how's the fuel consumption on the 500i? It likes gas. It, uh, it, 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 it likes the gas now. Let's see. Uh, you know, Napa Brent just asked a good question right there. Let me get down here. Let's see, Napa Brent said, where is the weight difference in the saw makers? How is the steel lighter? That's a very good point right there. And see, Napa Brent, he's a Napa. He, own, he, has a, he don't own a Napa store. He runs a Napa store down there in Broxton, Georgia. All right, so he knows the deal. All right, so <clears throat> if they take weight out of a saw, see the, the, 
the 500 to the 572, the, the 500 compared to the husband or 572, there's over a pound of weight difference between those two saws, both full of gas, both full of chain oil. The 500 holds two more ounces of saw gas than the 572 does. Okay, so it's holding more gas, and it's gonna, it should hold a little bit more oil. I know it's two more ounces of gas, but I'm not sure on the oil difference, so I'm, I'm sure it holds a little bit more oil, too. So, and it's still over a pound lighter. So, anytime you got weight difference, you got to think, are you taking away longevity? That's the million dollar question. Here's something else about steel too. And I want everybody listening to this right here. I think everybody give, gave steel a pass on the cost of that saw. Think about it. They get $1,400 for that 500. That's $400 more than, than your 461, 462, your 572. I think Steel is probably sitting back right now thinking, dang, guys, we've sold a ton of those saws at $400. Why didn't we go ahead and ask 1600 Why didn't we stretch and ask 1800 And the people run out and bought them and just, like, they didn't balk at it or anything. It's a good saw. It's a great filling saw. But is it worth $400 more? All right, so the 572, if you catch the dealers right, you can get 20% off of those saws. So then it becomes an $800 saw. So then you've got a $600 price difference between those two saws. Now, if I didn't have neck and back problems like I do, there's no way I would pay $1,400 for a saw because you can buy a 395 Hus Varner for less than that. And now if you want a saw, get you a 395. That's a freaking saw right there, son. I mean, those things don't play. Those things have got balls. I mean, they pick their balls up, and they towed them in a wheelbarrow. You hear me? If you ain't ever run a 395 that's right, you just go get you some of that and hang on to it with about a 28-inch bar and just let her rip. But still got a pass on charging $1,400 for that 500i. Now, if it lasts 20 years you know, maybe that's okay. If it only lasts two years because of the weight difference, there's something there in those saws that they took out to get that weight down like it is. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what they done or what they what they did to it to get it that way. But they did something to get that weight that way. But uh, you know if I wasn't doing the videos like I do, there's no way I would have ended up with that saw and bought and paid that saw. You realize I paid fourteen hundred plus tax. All right, so where I where I got the five hundred from is ten percent sales tax. So it's fourteen hundred dollars plus ten percent sales tax. So it's another one hundred and forty dollars on that. So that saw was fifteen hundred and forty dollars. Plus, I bought an extra chain with it, too, when I left there. So I'd have another RS chain with it because I was wanting to play with the steel chains also. And then I got the 362, 700 and something dollars, plus 10% sales tax. And then I got this 261, and I bought it in, in Mississippi for 7% sales tax. It was the 261, I got lucky on that one because... <clears throat> well, see, the 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 Hus Varner George the Hus Varner is magnesium. Is what's in the Hus Varner. It's not aluminum in the Hus Varner. So anyhow, 
the 261, they ordered the wrong 261 for me initially. And they ordered a regular 261, a non Mtronics 261. It was not a, a, a seesaw. And so I got it home. The C right there depicts the Mtronics. So I got it home and I called them and I said, this ain't the right saw. And so they ended up ordering me the Zimtronics 261 and they let me have it for that, for that thing for the same price. And uh, because that, that 261 with a 20 inch bar is supposed to be $619 is what that spall is supposed to be, which is the same price as a 550 XP Hus Warner. And uh, so I lucked out on what I paid for the for the 261 right there. But so I've got, you know, you do the math, 1550 in the in the 500, and then 700 or something plus 10% sales tax. So you can say over $800 in the 362, and then like 540 something dollars in the 261. So you're talking about, you're basically $3,000 right there in three saws, you know, that I bought. Did I do videos I want to put out there to where people can see them and then they can make up their mind what they're, what they're going to buy, what they're going to pick up or, or anything like that. And uh, I'm not sure what a good use, what a good price is for a used 395. I guess it depends on what kind of shape it's in. I think those saws normally run pretty close to about $1,300 new with like a 28 inch bar on them or something like that. And uh, so, <laughs> uh, something, let's see, a couple of them Napa Brent are going for 2020. And then one of them will go for, uh, hey Dustin from uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, want to go for um, uh, 2021 on there and stuff is what, it, what they'll go for. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Tax write-off, that's right, you gotta have that. Let me catch up on the comment right here. Oh, here's one right here, here's a good one. Uh, John Agin, or Agin, he says, any news on the new Husqvarna 90cc lineup? Killing me, your viewer from Northern Wisconsin. <clears throat> All right, so here's what I know about the, let's see, what does Zach say? Hang on, Zach, let's see what Zach. Let's see. I wish I could let you get in hands on the uh, 7310. Yeah, I've been wanting to... Uh, well, Zach, didn't that saw come with a Sugihara bar on it, the, the 7310? Didn't it come with one on it there? All right, so the 90cc um, Hush Warners there. All right, so it's Hush Hush. It's been on the down low pretty big. They let a press release out back in uh, either November or December about the saws and so uh there's still no word on when they're going to be released it's supposed to be like sometime this summer but but i i don't know i don't know for sure when it's going to be released uh it will be a 592 is what it's going to be it's going to be a five 592 it will not be fuel injected and everything you will not be fuel injected i do know that uh, it is going to it it is going to hus varner and sugi are partner now so you're gonna be able to get sugi bars on these um the sugi bars on the hus varner and they they will be branded they will be branded Hus Vaughner. So you're gonna we're finally gonna kind of get away from the old faithful bars the 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 Oregon branded. You're still gonna have them too, but you're gonna be able to get a lighter bar now on the saw, and that's gonna be a, a really big bonus for all of us consumers. So that's going to be a big deal. Sugi is a good good bar company. They've been building bars for a long time. Built a good good quality bar. Matter of fact, I'm running one on my 572 right here. <clears throat> it's got a 24 on it. 
So if I buy any aftermarket stuff, it's probably, you know, it'll be a, a Sugi or something like that is what it'll be and, uh, and stuff. So I'm trying to think. Uh, so here's a, here's a thing on the 90cc Hus 100, something to kind of ponder on. All right, so you've got, You've got steel with the 500i. It's a 79 cc saw, and Husqvarner is coming out with, you know, a, a 90 cc saw, 592. <clears throat> All right. So, can you imagine what is riding on that deal right now? I mean, think about it. All right. So you got you got steel with a fourteen hundred dollar saw before tax, all right, and and it weighs. Dang, I wish I had my stuff right here, but it's on my phone and I'm on the line. I don't want to go off of it, to, but I, I've got a video where I show the weights on it. <clears throat> the the five hundred is in the nineteen pound range, just nineteen pounds. <clears throat> I think it's 19 pounds, seven ounces, seven point something ounces. And that's with the, the 25 inch bar full of gas and oil. That's always under 20 pounds. <laughs> I mean, and that's crazy. Okay, so, but it's $1,400. And then you got Hus Warner coming out with a 90 cc saw. And it's not going to be fuel injected. It's going to be auto tuned. And so, can you can you imagine what is riding right there on that? When that thing, when they say, "Okay, we're going to release them," what you know? How is it going to fit into that equation of everything? Is it going to be received well? Because I can tell you right now. It's going to be less than the 500. So think about that. All right. So there with guys, with guys, there's there's a lot of guys. I've seen Christina pop up on here. Most everybody on here is guys. There may be a few girls on here. I'm not sure. Girls may be the same way. I I, I don't know. But guys, guys always, you know. They want the biggest, the baddest, the most powerful thing. So what happens with the 90cc Hus Warner and it's less than the 500? Are people going to flock to it to buy it like they bought the 500? And oh, by the way, like I said, it's going to be a little bit Less than that, yes, yeah, good. Arr, 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 Tim Allen. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Uh, so you've got you're gonna have a saw that's gonna be more than ten cc's in displacement, larger than the five hundred is. So what's going to happen there? Because everybody wants to compare the 572 to the 500, but there's eight cc's of difference there. So then you turn around and you've got then the 500 and then you've got the 592. Well, then the only fair thing to do then is, is compare the 500 to the 592. Now, I've done said, I've done told them, I said, look, I said, I don't care if I've got to buy the 592 or what I got to do to get one. Just make dang sure that I got one in my hands as quick, as fast as I can where I can run the dog out of it. You know, and this, this, let's, let's put, let's, let's, burn up some chains on it, man, and stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, chainsaw stuff, man, is a, a, a big, you know, a big deal and stuff. And, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see, how would the 
590. Kevin says, how would the 592 compare to the 395? Well, the the 395 is, you know, they don't sell a lot of those saws. So the smaller ones outsell those larger saws. But the, <clears throat> the 592 is kind of like uh, the emissions part of it or whatever. You know, it's the... The 592, of course, is going to be auto-tuned, so the saw is going to burn a lot cleaner than than what the 395 is going to is going to burn. And my understanding is is that the saw is going to look is is going to be shaped and designed like the 572 is, and uh, and they're going to offer a non-XP variant of that saw, and and that. That kind of uh, uh, that kind of surprises me, cause see they've got you've got the five seventy two Brian Brian I see Brian on there Brian Chips Brian if you would if you can hear me Brian email me uh, it's it's Cotton Top Three C O T O N T O P three at yahoo.com. email me Brian and email me your phone number. I want your phone number and everything, if you would, there, please, and uh, send it to me. And I'm gonna get up with you, probably over the the next few days and everything, because I got some stuff I want to uh, I want to run by you or whatever and stuff. Uh, Brian is over there, if I'm not mistaken. Brian is in uh, very northern uh, California, where the uh, where the show enough big trees is. He's a uh, uh, he logs over there in that area. I actually met Brian, and uh, he's a he's a very good loader operator too. Can run a loader very very well. But if you would email me your phone number, Brian, where I can get a hold of you and stuff. Let's see. Uh, uh, so anyhow, yeah, no, no, with one T, Brian, C O T, with just one T, C O T O N T O P three. It's the same thing as my uh, my YouTube channel, just one T in cotton top, C O T O N T O P three at yahoo.com and uh, just do that for me if you would but uh because uh i want to do some stuff there you go that's it william jordan popped it up there real quick uh that's it uh so let me uh look through here um uh, somebody had the, somebody just popped up uh okay i i got you there zach i seen them when they come through i just can't look at it right now because i'm on my phone Somebody wants to know my thoughts on the auto-tune stuff. All right, so um, my thoughts on it is, is it, the saw is reading, I think it's 10 times a second, I believe is what it is. It's reading altitude, air temperature, and humidity 10 times a second. And it's adjusting the carburetor throughout the entire RPM range to run perfectly through there. And also what it's doing is, is it's, it, it's not going to let you over rev the saw. So like a lot of people, a lot of saws have been burned up by guys twisting on the high speed needle on it and they lean them out too much. There's a super, super fine line right there of once you like, this is the line you're good on this side of it, but as soon as your finger starts coming to the other side where you see it right there coming through, you just screwed up. You just finna put you a, a, a piston and a jug on it because you just, you just burn it up. And so that saw is making, the, the saw is taking care of its stuff on its own and it's running at perfection all the way through it. It's so tactical, Goober. That's my friend Chris. He's Chris, you ought to come over here and join me on the live feed right here is what you ought to do unless you're changing a dirty baby diaper or something. But anyhow, the saw is taking care of itself to where you're not having to do it. It's all you're having to do is put saw gas and oil in it and run a dog out of it. Now, the Mtronics, steel Mtronics or the 500i or any of the auto-tune stuff, the auto-tune, uh, 
you can you it can be connected up to a computer it will tell you exactly how many times that saw has been cranked and it works with a steel it, does, it seals the same way it tells you exactly how many times the saw has been cranked how many total hours is on the saw runtime on it it'll even give you the percentages of the throttle usage on the saw like how many percent of the runtime have you run it wide open it'll tell you all that now i'm supposed to be getting my hands on that for the husqvarna stuff and to where i can hook up to any of the auto tune stuff and get the data off of it and that's going to be pretty cool now i'm fixing to pursue and try to get that same thing for the uh for the for the steels to where i can do that too uh, Aaron Moore just asked, all right, Brian, I, I'll look at it right quick and, make, and see here. Um, Aaron Moore asked, do I warm up my saws for a couple of minutes? I had to get on my guys one time for starting up a saw and going to town. All right, Brian, it came through. I got it right here. Uh, yeah, I got it, Brian. Appreciate that. I'll be... I'll be tell. I'll let you know for uh for a holler at you that so I'll text you first so that you'll know it's me, so you won't think it's something you know an odd a telemarketer or something like that. Uh, I crank the saws up. I don't want to get on them when I first crank them up. A saw warms up very quickly, so like <clears throat> thirty seconds, thirty. Usually, what I do is I go ahead and I crank I crank the saw up. And sometimes I won't have my earplugs in yet. Sometimes I will, but I won't have my gloves on. So I'll crank the saw up, set it on the ground, and let it run while I put my gloves on. Or I put my earplugs in and then put my gloves on. By the time I put my earplugs in and do that, she's ready to rock and roll. She's ready to go. Uh, somebody said, uh, warms it up for five minutes. You ain't, got, you ain't got to quite do it that long. I mean, that's just a preference if you want. Of course, a, a two-stroke, once it gets to temperature, they're made to be run wide heck open, especially the pro stuff. They're, they're meant to just run the hair off of them. I mean, let them eat. That's, that's why they're, they're pro. They're, you, you get on the RPM and you stay on it and you let them go. Um, Let's see, uh, somebody asked about the premix. I am running premix gas. I started running premix gas in uh, August of 20. And the stuff is expensive. I mean, it's, I mean, I buy it by the five gallon can and uh, it's expensive to run, but uh, I wished I would have went to it um, a lot sooner than I did and everything. But, uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. Goats forward and farms, I think shutting them down right after running them is worse than not running them. Up. No, it, it, it really don't, you're really not going to hurt them. Just going to, because a lot, if you'll watch a lot of my videos, I do something in my videos when I'm cutting trees down. You'll see me, I want y'all to hear on film. I want y'all to hear the tree hit the ground. And so a lot of times when I make that release cut there, I kill the saw right then. And I pull the muffler, the cover off one of these mufflers on one of these saws here and pulled it through a, pulled it through a stroke where I could see the, the skirt on the piston to see what it, see what it looks like. And, uh, there was nothing on that skirt. And I've got, dude, I've got saws. My, my, one of those 372s over there is a daggum year 2000 model. That's the same jug and piston on that saw that was on it when it was brand new. I think the biggest thing that you can do, the t two biggest things you can do on two strokes and on chainsaws is this right here. Number one, make sure your air cleaner stays clean knock that thing out every now and then you run it if you run it all day be sure to knock it out and clean it out if i do a tree job when i get back home i'm gonna knock it out i'm gonna knock it out every time i'm gonna blow the saw off or whatever i want to clean the saw make sure it's clean so knock the air cleaner out the saw's got to breathe if you've got a spark arrestor in it 
some places frown on, you need to make sure that, sp that spark arrestor stays clean too. That saw needs to breathe. That those screens in the spark arrestor are so fine that the carbon and stuff and little pieces from the muffler will, they'll lodge in that screen on that thing and it won't let it breathe. It won't let the exhaust pass through. So if you're in a place where you can get away with it, take the spark arrestor out of it. Rip them out. Take them out. Get them gone. Get rid of them. And let that saw breathe. Gas. Good gas. Number two, good gas. If you're not going to run premix, premix is very expensive. I understand that. I know that. I, I neglected not running premix for years. If you're not going to run premix, you're going to run mix your own. Here's what you do. Find you a station that has individual pump nozzles for the pumps. So don't go to one that's got a, a, a hose that has like three different grades of gas coming out of that one hose. Go to, go to a station that if it has three different grades of gas, you've got three different hoses to pick from. All right, go to a station that sells non-ethanol gas. Buy the highest octane non-ethanol gas you can get your crummy little hands on. If it's 92 octane or 93 octane, get it. Buy that non-ethanol. Get highest octane. If it's a 50 to 1, if it says 50 to 1, which all your pro stuff's going to be 50 to 1, Mix it 50 to 1. A lot of people mess up and they think, I'm not going to run it 50 to 1. I'm going to go a little bit richer on oil. You're messing up. You're messing up. Run it 50 to 1. They don't set it to 50 to 1 for nothing. That's the manufacturer recommends 50 to 1. That's what they want you to run it at. That's a deal right there. Uh, Napa's uh, VP Fuels. 50 to 1, 5 gallons at $84 for 5 gallons. And, v, and VP is some dang good gas, too. So anyhow, mix it 50 to 1. Buy the synthetic oil mix, too. Try to, if you can, go with one of the branded mixes. Go to, um, if, you're going, if you want... Um, Hus Varner, run the run the the Hus Varner synthetic oil mix. You know, if you all you got steel, run the steel because that stuff is perfect. That stuff is absolutely perfect right there, or whatever. And then there's other oil mixes that that have like that that make gas mix that are really good that that you can mix in there. But I like to kind of stay with the branded stuff like the, the oil mix, the Husqvarna, the synthetic ones. Uh, you can buy them. Uh, you can buy the packs of them off of Amazon, and they're not very expensive. I go to the store. I have a couple of stores right here close by that I can get non-ethanol gas from and uh, get it, mix it like that. But now that I'm running the pre-mix, uh, somebody said, uh, I think Napa Brent, a while ago, uh, VP is 94 octane. Uh, and, and those are all going to be high octane stuff like that. Like he said, the, the VP is 94 octane. The Hus Varner premix is 95 octane. I think the steel is 90. It's either 92 or 93 octane. It's not as, it's not as much as the other. But if the manufacturer puts their name on it, they're standing behind it, and it's got to be good stuff. All right, so Jay just put a, a, a $10 out there from Waco. Hey, Jay, I appreciate that. All right, bar oil. Let's see. Uh, if Jesse said steel or husky mix is both good. E either one of them, whichever one you want to go with, is that right there. Just do everything you can to stay away from the ethanol-based uh, gas. Stay away from that, and, uh, and you'll be good. Uh, bar oil. Uh, Matthew Clark asked about bar oil. I always ran just save a chain, bar and chain oil. And, and the reason I did was that's what we were buying. 
and it was and it was cheap and everything. All right, temperature affects the save a chain bar and chain oil pretty bad. And I always thought that bar and chain oil was bar and chain oil. One thing you don't do, don't run motor oil for bar and chain oil, okay? Or burnt motor oil. I get that question a lot. It will not stay on the chain. It's not made for it. And temperature on a bar and chain is very critical. You've got a chain that's moving at about 88 feet a second on that bar. You've got to have oil on it to lubricate it, okay? So you need something good. To, like the cheaper stuff is, is good. I mean, it's fine. That's better than running, than running motor oil and everything. So when I first hooked up with Huss Varner and before Kill left that day, he left me with a case of quartz of the Husqvarner. It's the all, I believe it's the all weather stuff. And, and so, let's see, Brian says, uh, our cutters aren't allowed to run used oil. It's just, it's not good. And the, the thing too about the used motor oil, it, it don't stay on, it gets everywhere. Man, that stuff, that, you'll be wearing that crap. My God, that stuff will be It'll, it'll be from one end of you to the other, man. It's, it's awful. Just don't even go there or anything like that. And, I, I mean, it's, it's got to be uh, toxic. But uh, So they left me with a case of, of the all-weather bar and chain oil. So I started messing with it. There again, any of the branded stuff, whether it's Husqvarna or Steel or one of the big brands like that, man, and that – that all weather oil, that is some, that's some dang good stuff right there. Uh, very, very uh, good oil. And I very seldom rub a wire edge off a bar at all anymore. I mean, I, I very seldom do that. When when I was running the Saber chain, I can show you one of my bars over on the 372. I've actually got a half moon cut in one side of it that where the chain comes off the tip off the roller that is run got in there and uh yeah they've got the somebody just matthew just mentioned the synthetic bar oil they've got it out now they've got uh uh the biodegradable stuff uh they've got that out somebody uh, derek just mentioned the shafers uh that's good stuff too anything that's got a a good name on it right there is uh I mean, by all means, go go far there. So I'm enjoying talking about the chainsaws, man. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. How many saws do I have? That's a good question. I really don't know, to be honest with you. I've got five. There's five sitting on the table right here beside me right now. And then I've got three arbor saws over there. I've got a, uh, I've got two 335 top handle saws, and I've got a 540, a T540 top handle saw sitting over there. And then I've got two 372s. There's a 394, and there's also the Milwaukee saw sitting over there. But Brian brought up a good point. I mean, it's like women in their jewelry and uh, in their shoes. I mean, come on, guys, grow you some balls and equal, equal, uh, equal your wife or your girlfriend with their shoes and chainsaws. I mean, just, just tell them like it is. Just tell them, just, just tell them. Uh, it's just how it's gonna be. Just, just grow you a set. Uh, <laughs> I was. The the other night uh, I was watching a uh, the live feed with Tim Ard and he, he was on with tree stuff and he was talking about chainsaws and and boring and all that stuff like that and so me and David Breeden which works for Hus Varner and uh, Jeremy we were kind of on a group text right there and, and we were texting between us. We were all three of us were watching the live feed. They're over in Georgia and I'm over here. 
And um, and so one guy popped up on the live feed and he said, he said something about how do I talk my wife into letting me buy a 500 or or something like that, you know, whatever. David texts through. David's on his wife's account now. He's on his wife's account. He texts Dustin. and he said, hey, to me and Jeremy, he says, I'm fixing to smoke old so-and-so right here real quick. And, of course, he's in his wife's account. So he, he, he directs the comment to this guy that just asked about talking. And David said, he blasted him. He's like, dude, you don't even need a saw or something like that because you don't even have the balls to, you know, to, to even just man up and just go buy you a daggum saw. You know what I mean? I just, I cracked up. But uh, you, can't, you can't have too many saws. Heck. I've had three saws hung in the same stupid tree at one time, and I thought I was going to have to go home and grab another saw. I mean, you just can't have too many. I mean, you get one hung, it's like a, it's like cancer. It's like they uh, uh, get, uh, you know, they they want to all hang up. And let me get back over here where I can see the see the catch back up with the comments here. Let's see uh, <clears throat> here. Oh, man. So talking about saws here, too. So, you know, they Hus Warner came out with the 572, and they were going to quit making the... There's, a, there's Jay. Give me $5 there. Appreciate that there, Jay. Jay Whitehead. So Hus Warner came out with the 572. They're going to take the place of the 372. They're going to quit building the, three, the 372, you know. So... You know, I don't know if that was a market employee or, or what the deal was on that. But all of a sudden, then, they're not going to quit building the 372. You're still going to be able to buy brand new 372s. So are. they gonna, They still going to be the same price as the... Uh, uh, the 572 right there, same CCs and everything. It's just a auto tune or non auto tune. Now Zach, Zach's tree service. He's over there. Uh, Zach, y'all see him keep popping up here. I'm gonna talk about him in just a second. Uh, Zach and uh, Let's Dig Chris are, are big buddies. They they're both over there in North Carolina. They live right there, pretty close to one another. There, I've actually met Zach. When I went over there and I did the videos with uh, with Chris with Let's Dig uh, almost three years ago now, with uh, we cut down the cedar trees, Zach came over there. And uh, Zach is an echo guy. All his saws are echoes. He runs, he runs echoes. And there's nothing wrong with echoes. Echoes are good saws. And echo has actually stepped up to the plate. Zach has mentioned the 7310. Um the the 7310 is echo's newest saw and they built it to compete with the 372 the 572 the the one the kind of the cool thing about the 7310 echo is this right here it's a 70 71 uh 71 it, what cc is that saw zach is it is it 70 or is it 71 or is it 72 ccs i can't remember right off the top of my head what CCs it is. But anyhow, they built it to compete against the 73, all right, 73 CCs. They built it to compete with the 572, the 462, and the 372. Here's what's so neat about that saw is, is they were able to get it to pass emissions without having to put any electronics on that saw. So that saw still has a high and low speed and an idle screw on it. And that's actually pretty cool. And then one, I have not seen one of them saws. I have not had one in my hands yet. But <clears throat> that 7310, Zach, to correct me too if I'm wrong here, that 7310 is $800, correct? Isn't that what that saw costs new? And... uh and they got an air filtration system on it that is supposed to be 
a lot like the Husqvarna air injection stuff. That's one thing that still will never catch up 800, 850 with a 24-inch bar. That's one thing that still will never, ever, I think we'll never, ever catch up with Husqvarna on air filtration. Let me show y'all something here right quick. Let's just do this. I have run about, y'all just bear with me. I'm not going to watch the comments. We're going to do this here. Uh, let me flip the screen around here. Okay. Let's get over here. I'm going to show y'all something here. I don't think I have run two tanks of gas through this 500 since I pulled the air filter out of it. Let's do this here real quick. Because I put my sticker on it earlier, and I was looking at that air filter. Look at the stuff in those pleats right there. I'm trend-setting Napa Brent. All right, we're going to pull this song going off. Let's gently pull it off here. Okay. All right, y'all ready? This table's clean here. Here we go. Remember, this is a $1,400 saw now. Come on. And that's not even two tanks of gas, and it's still got stuff in it right there. All right, let's look right there. I'm not going to put it back on. Before, before I put it back on, I'm going to put some, I'm actually going to put some grease around it this time here. So... Now, my opinion on this right here, you see that piece right there? And that piece right there, those big pieces. Sure, you're going to get some fines in it right there. Shut up, John. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, those big chunks right there, like the fines, that's one. You're going to get that stuff in there. But it shouldn't be... It shouldn't be that bad after just over a tank of gas. I mean, that's a lot of stuff in that filter right there. So if you've got one of these saws here, I would highly suggest keeping it knocked out, keeping that filter knocked out often right there. And uh, this stuff, let's see... Uh, Oh, man, I'm not going to put it, like I said, I'm not going to put it back on anytime. But I just wanted to show that. I mean, let me get you back in my holder here. That, my friends, is where the rubber meets the road. And again, that's a, uh, a $1,400 saw sucking that much stuff up in it right there. Yeah, so uh, I see Joe May just showed it right there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me go get, kind of catch back up here. Let's see. That's a good idea. Brett says he knocks his filters out two or three times a day. Some of this stuff, man, that you cut in, the fiber coming off of it is so bad. And uh, and that's some, there's uh, some people talking about... Uh, like KTM is talking about the uh, saw uh, Chad talking about the Max Flow and and uh, KTM's oil foam filter on the 462. Um, those are those are all good ideas on those saws. If the performance saws, um, if if I was out there like where Brian is and I was uh, felling out there or you know. If I was running a saw all day, every day, to where, like, a lot of times, like, I go out, I mean, you know, I may cut four or five trees down, 
the hardest I've ran in a long time was like Mr. Larry here uh, last Friday. I I took and cut down. It was 20, 20 something trees I cut down for him that day, and that's the hardest I run. But if I if I was going to be doing that day in and day out, I would I would want something like the Max Flow or something with a foam wrap on it, with with spray with oil and stuff like that, and and put on it. And I tell you, like the y'all, a lot of y'all watch my stuff all the time. Uh, when you cut trees the way that I cut them, boring. The boring's not so bad. That face cut. If you if you do the seventy degree long face cut, the the dang it, that's the reason why I cut them. I cut mine like this and end up with a ninety because instead of coming down at an at an angle or an angle like this right here, I've got more of an angle like that, so it doesn't you don't get as much fiber running off of it, but all that stuff in that filter right there was from uh, last Saturday when I ran the, the 572 and that 500 against each other, making cuts, making time cuts. And uh, that that's from that. And it, it, it's, it's not even two tanks of gas through that thing right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, TJ asked, what chain am I running on my 550 Mark II? Hang on, and I'll I'll show it. Yeah, Brian's right, man. Out there, we're we're brining them. They a lot of them run the, the run the full wrap handles, and so they they'll never swap sides of the tree. They just flip the saw over, and that stuff when they're holding that saw when it's turned over the other way or making the hum bolts like they make sometimes, man, that stuff's just blowing right back down into that saw in your face. Everything. Hang on, I'll show you the saw the chain that I'm running. Now, I was running an SP33G on it, which is a uh, semi-chisel chain. Uh, they were wanting me to run it, and that's a good, that's an X-cut chain. It's a dang good chain. So this is this is what I what I just put on it right there. It says Ryobi, right, disregard that, but this the uh, this is a full chisel. 325 50 gauge is what this is that, that I've got on the matter of fact I've got this on the 550 and the uh, the 261 both like I said it's a full chisel you can see it right there it's not it doesn't really have much anti kickback on it at all which is what I like I would prefer I would prefer that drive link not to not to protrude up any like the X cut and the the JLG or whatever it is and the ELX organ and stuff. And uh <laughs> well it's just the box that it came in, man. I it, I can't help that it had Ryobi on it there, but but you can see uh it's a full chisel right there. That's what I that's what I prefer is a full chisel chain like that uh, i have i have played with the brian will be happy with me i've played with the with the uh square ground a pretty good bit i've gotten pretty good with with, with hand filing it sharpening it, hand filing it. i use a uh i use an uh jig it's called an atop 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 jig it costs about 200 bucks i think or so something like that and uh, and so I've done pretty good on on hand filing that stuff. Let's see here. Uh, that's right. There are William says Husqvarna doesn't allow on, online sales of pro saws unless you can drive and pick it up in the store. Uh, William, there are a few Husqvarna dealers out there that will ship you saws, and it's ones that sell a lot of inventory and they kind of look the other way on it and they'll let them do it one of them that i know of is uh safford i believe it's safford equipment s-a-f-f-o-r-d they're over here in towards south alabama uh i think they will ship you saws they sell a lot of us stuff and yeah, let's see uh 
Mm -mm -mm. I wouldn't want to put any WD-40 on an air filter or anything. I just put regular, just some light grease on it's what I'll do. Nothing heavy or anything like that. Just something, uh, uh, just something light on there. Just something to, to, uh, just, just to something a little extra right there to kind of catch anything that, that might want to go that direction. It'll be like, whoa, buddy, no, uh, you, 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 you're not, you're not getting in here, dog. We, we're going to stop you here. Uh, and stuff. We're going to, we're going to stop that. Let's see, uh. Oh, uh, I'm trying to just kind of look up the, look through, uh, see if I've missed anything. <laughs> hey, some funny stuff goes on in the comments. Some stuff kind of goes on kind of sidebar that I can't keep up with or don't know or anything. <clears throat> Let's see, y'all. Those y'all keep talking about snow, y'all keep the devil's cocaine up there where y'all are at. I don't want none of it down here. Nothing. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> Living the dream, I ask, is anyone making other than a paper filter for the 500i? I don't know yet. It probably ain't been out long enough for anybody to get anything out yet. Uh, so I don't know. There's Rich Peters says, I'm new to your channel. Appreciate that. Rich. Uh, <laughs> Derek Robertson says, Safford is not too far from us. Derek, what town is, well, no, Safford Equipment's in Safford, Alabama. That's right. I was fixing to say, it's in, it's in Safford, Alabama. It's where it's at. Uh, probably Brian Ellis and him are probably about ready to, Lob bombs over here at me right now from Northport over there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, George, he's right. Stalls in Pennsylvania, they all ship saws. They sell, oh, uh, I can't think of his name right now that has that place, but they sell a lot of Husqvarna stuff. Let's see. Uh, mm -mm. Man, uh, I don't want no five foot of snow. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, Zach's hoping for an ice storm. He wants. He wants. He's in. He's in the tree business over there. He likes. He likes to do tree work over yonder and everything. Let's see. Uh, I think we're getting rain out here now. Let's see. Uh, uh, Okay, so, all right, so these are, I, I like the Oregon stuff. Um, I like it a lot. I like the, the cuttingest chain I've ever run brand new, no joke. I mean, hands down, the cuttingest chain I've ever run brand new straight out of the box is a freaking X-Cut. The, the C83, I think the C83 is the 50 gauge X cut, and I think the C85 is the 58 gauge X cut. That's some cutting stuff. And then the Oregon, what is it, the JLG, I believe it is. Uh, that's what I've got several loops of it, and I, I can make that stuff. I can make that stuff home. I'm talking about, man, that I can. Dude, I can take that organ chain and I know just what to do to it to make it just lay lay right in it and just pull. The steel, I've got a bunch of the steel RS stuff. It's some good chain, but it 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 took me a little while to get it to where it was smooth. It was like it was it was like it was real aggressive. To the point, it was almost like, and I hadn't worked on the rakers or anything on it. It was like it just wanted to, it just, it wanted to do like that right there. It didn't want to just, yeah, likes to chatter. He, he just said it. It, it, it. it didn't want to be just like smooth. And that, when I'm running a saw, I'm looking for a certain feel from that bar and chain. 
and I just wasn't getting it from the steel. So man, I got pissed and I got in here and I started working on that, on that RS that's on that 500 over there. And I worked on it and I changed files was the first thing I did. I changed files. I went back to my normal third files, 732nd and, and started working on it. And it got, it got better. I also worked on the rakers on it too. I worked on them, even though they were pretty well in check, I worked on them. And when I, when I filed and I worked on the rakers, it got better. And I thought, okay, all right. So I brought it back in here then, and I filed it again with the seven thirty seconds file or five and a half millimeter. And yeah, I did that, but I, then I came back and I did it again, Brent. Not only did I catch the rakers on top, but I also rounded the rakers off more on the fronts of them right there too. Because what 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 a chain does when it when it cuts, what a what a chain does, you, you kinda gotta you gotta have a weird mind about this crap, okay? So a a chain right here, th this is your depth gauge your raker or drag. Oregon calls it all three. Is this is this little doohickey right here sticking up? Okay. What that thing does is when it when it goes to when it goes to cut, this is your top plate on the chain. This is your point, your leading edge right here. This is what starts to cut, is that thing right there. So when this when the top plate hits the piece of wood, this raker right here is supposed to be 25 thousandths lower than this top plate. If this raker is not lower than this top plate right there in that leading edge, it's not going to cut. It's just going to ride on a tree is all it's going to do. So this raker right here is supposed to be 25 thousandths of an inch lower in this point on this top plate right there. So what happens when that when that cutter hits the wood <clears throat> because there's a 25 thousandths difference right here, it automatically rolls that tooth back to where it's cutting, but this raker is also riding on that piece of wood. And that's what gives you your depth of your cut is that tooth goes through that piece of wood right there. And so what I did was not only filed the raker down to guide it, I probably got it just a little bit lower than 25 thousandths right there. And then this front, I'm gonna turn like this. This front edge right here is very crucial to how that chain reacts when it's cutting. So if you just file the top of that raker right there and you get a flat spot on it, it may, act, it may not, the tooth may not act real smooth as it's going through. So you can take and you can roll this from this raker off and give it a roll to it, a better roll to it, a smoother transition and it'll help it on what it's doing. A lot of that stuff, you can get a, you know, a raker gauge and everything, and those are very helpful to have on those. It gives you a good baseline of where you need to be. And uh, there's a lot of different styles. This is what one looks like. Right here, this is an organ. That's an organ. Here's another style right here. And then here's a Huss Varner style one right here too. Uh, this got this is a Huss Varner file gauge right here. It still makes them also. There's a lot of different ones. And uh, <clears throat> they're helpful to know, but I use them some I do somebody just asked about the LGX I do like the LGX a lot I use them some but 
even though I use them, I know what the feel, what I'm looking for on the feel, what the chain's telling me is just pulling through the through the tree as I'm as I'm cutting through it and everything. So uh uh the the LGX chain is what I'm running on the 572. It's got the LGX on it, and then I've got a bunch of other loops of the LGX. The LGX and then the the ELX organ and the X cut Hus Varner and the Steel RS. They're all very, very comparable. I think the steel is probably the hardest temper of all of those chains that I just mentioned right there. The steel, the temper on it's very hard. I'll show you all this, what I did to the steel chain on the 500 right here. I'll show you what the... So you can see the the drive links do not protrude up beside the raker right there. You see how narrow that I've got that top of that raker right there? I mean, that thing right there would, would get you. All right, I'm going to set the... So that's the... That's the steel RS chain right there. This is the this is the JLG organ. See, it the drive link does not protrude up beside the raker or the depth gauge or the drag. Let's see. You can see how, see how much of an angle I've got on it right there. <clears throat> and so then this is of course the, the Oregon, the 325, the new chain. That's one thing I don't understand on the 261 here still. Well, I know why they do it. They put a 63 gauge chain on a 50 cc saw. Um, for wear purposes, you can look at it like the the drives. You got more of a footprint on the sprocket back there, so you get less wear, supposedly. But the problem is, say you're out cutting wood somewhere with your buddy or at your house, and you're doing some tree work or something or doing something. Say you're out working storm damage like I do sometimes. Down there trying to help people like when I went down there to uh, to Soso, Mississippi down there to help them folks down there. Say you hit a piece of steel or nail or break a chain. Where are you going to go and find a 63 gauge 325 pitch chain at? You're not going to find one at Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that. Now, you can probably find a 50-gauge 325 somewhere. It may be a semi-chisel, but it would be something to get you by. The only place you're going to find one of those chains like it right there in a 63-gauge is going back right there. And I believe that's why they, uh, I believe that's why they do it there too they they're smart i mean they they don't uh they're not a manufacturer for uh for nothing i'm gonna go ahead and put this uh i'm gonna put this 500 back together i'm gonna go ahead and put the cleaner on here i'm gonna set y'all back on the tripod here and where y'all can uh where y'all can Watch. Let me flip it around. You know, it's just all stuff to uh, consider when you when you're making your purchase. So 
And there's a lot of fiber right there too. Try to get it all off there. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a real, just a light layer of grease around it there. little added insurance there there is actually some fiber inside of this uh, filter a little bit in there I don't like I don't like that I don't I don't like that at all because see that stuff gets in that motor in that engine, and that's not good. That is not good. I don't, I don't necessarily like the way that this seals on this thing. I think there's a lot of margin for error right here. See, that's what it looks like right there. And all it does is just sit on there like that. Then this cover grabs that little peg right there. And you stick it on and then you twist it. And it's not pulling. I would like to see it sandwiched on there tight, you know, like you see that you got to unscrew this to get it. And I mean, it's tightened down on it. Let's see. I would think that on a $1,400 saw like that, that the air filter would seal a little bit better than, than that right there. So anyhow. Let's see. How long have we been on? Ah, dog, we done been on nearly an hour and a half, man. And uh, stuff, somebody. <laughs> I get who said that right there real quick. Let's see. Uh, uh, that's a good price on those steel light bars there, Brian, 129 Those are some good bars too, man. I, I like that bar. Let's see. Uh, Johnny S. says, Anybody ever tell me I look like Woody Harrelson and sound like I've, I've got that several times? <laughs> like, yeah, let's see. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to crank. I'm going to, before, before we leave, I'm going to let y'all listen to, to the saws run right here. I brought old uh, Hunter out here and a case boyfriend last night. He's all guy. You know, he likes jacked up trucks, big tires, you know, 
muffler, you know, loud pipes and all that stuff like that. And so, uh, Anna Kate, they were going to go out last night. He was at the, he was at the house and, and I, I, I told him, I said, come on down to the shop, boy. I said, I don't want you to hear the saw run. So he come down here and I said, I said, check this out. So I, I grabbed the 362 and I had just put the bark box on it right there. Let's see. I'm going to lean it down. Jeremy's texting me. No, not texting me, but snapping me now. And clear that off. See? So you can see I've got the large dogs on it right there. I'm going to lean it down a little bit more. Sixty-two. I'll crank the five hundred right quick. I ain't gonna lie. I, the five hundred, man, I love this thing, and I also love it that it's got a purge button on it too. The the purge is the is the way to go on the saws. thing about them full wrap handles that gum at brian they so hard to fill up with gas and oil in because it throws the you about need to dig a hole out or something or stick some logs up or some sticks up under it where it'll set it level because it jacks them man it throws them all so bad right there and stuff but uh <laughs> oh man i'm done for tonight i appreciate all y'all tuning in and hanging out with me right here we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers, man. It's been like almost uh, like watching paint dry getting to this point, you know. And uh, But I enjoy putting the videos out. I enjoy filming them and getting them out. So if you're, if you're not subscribed to me and you're watching this thing or you are going to watch it later on, man, I... I'd appreciate it if you click that dang button for me, you know, and because I, I tell you, I since I've done this, I've put my heart in it, man. I, I mean, I have, I have, I have done. It's not for lack of trying and stuff like that. And uh, um, I just, I, I love a camera, love filming, and then love posting the videos out here, and love going. I love going to the shows. I hate the stupid COVID stuff that this got everything jacked up because it messed up everything for last year. I think there's going to be be able to do some shows this year. Some things are still going to go through this first quarter, though. This year, I don't think any everything's going to be kind of down a little bit. But poor old Jill, bless her heart, she ain't, she ain't hardly want to go nowhere, or be anywhere, or anything. Good gracious, I slung freaking chain oil. God, all over my iPad. Lord have mercy. I did it for y'all, dude. It's all over my phone, too. Dang it. But, uh, 
Oh, Jill, she's been worried about getting it, and, and I mean, I understand that, you know, and everything. So I'm fixing to take something and clean this oil up, uh, bar and chain oil up. It's, it's all over. So appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good night tonight, and have a good Sunday tomorrow. And uh, I, like Napa Brent said, class dismissed. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.